This is Planet Steam. This is Robert Reich. This is my copy of Super Freakonomics. This is a cute puppy my girlfriend shared with me on Facebook. What do these things have in common? They are all related to the core tenets of economic theory. Well, not the puppy. It's just adorable. I mean, look at it. My girlfriend, conversely, is a bookkeeper. Planet Steam is an older game, so one may wonder to its inclusion among my early videos. For starters, it's a game commonly found at game stores, and second, there's virtually no coverage of it online. For a fantasy flight game, it has certainly fallen under the radar. The questions arise, is it worth looking at? The answer is yes, with a large sandworm-sized caveat. At its core, Planet Steam is a, com is a commerce game, involving moments of bidding, resource management, and price manipulation. It's a game based on understanding supply and demand. In Planet Steam, each player is assigned a stack of claim tokens and a fleet of airships. The board is divided into a map where players can claim regions of a city, the current price of tanks, the current round, and a large section where the players and price of various resources are monitored and adjusted. With two players, two columns are blocked off. With three, one is blocked. And with four or more, the entire map is used. Each player receives one starting airship for each resource, though they can upgrade one for free at the beginning of the game. Although illustrated competently, uh, these serve no purpose other than to store your res resources. They don't fly or exhibit any other attributes, effectively floating warehouses. You can upgrade them, increase their capacity, and that is all. A veneer thematic thus far. Then we have those supply and demand sliders, resembling uh, steam gauges, a fitting touch, and representing the various resources of ore, water, energy, and inexplicably quartz. Why it's not crystal, I could not tell you. One half of each gauge represents price, the other supply. As you sell or buy, you adjust these gauges, and the end of each player turn, if residing on a color other than green, the, players, the price can adjust up or down, affecting future rounds. Skilled players can obviously find ways to manipulate the market in their favor. Adverse to other games, with dozens of fast-paced rounds, Planet Steam, is, in comparison, can be considered a bit of a slog, with a complete playthrough encompassing, at most, six rounds. Tanks, the only way to introduce resources into the game, also vary in price, depending on demand. The game also offers specialist cards, which are not character cards, that players can bid on at the beginning of each round. Initially, I thought it was strange that players don't just control a specialist as a character, throughout the whole game until I finished my first complete playthrough and realized the relative strength of a specialist changes throughout a game's running time. The game features a different uh, arrangement of specialists for every player count. At two, each card offers two specialists, but as the player count increases, these will split into uh, their own cards. Uh, like this, with three players, the specialists split up, with only one card sharing two characters. At four players, one character sits on each card, and with five, a new specialist is introduced. These cards also denote the order of player activation. And there is a die. For some reason. Only employed to determine player order at the start of the game, and during one point in each round when claiming land. The beginning of a turn involves the first player bidding on one of the specialist cards. Other players can contest. And once all the special cards are hired in player order, bonus resources can be acquired. Regions on the map can be claimed either by employing building licenses or by rolling said die. Claim squares allow the placement of tanks in the next phase, but are also worth money at the end of the game. Being about commerce, money is everything. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Well, in the context of this game, that is correct. As one can imagine, the early stages of the game resemble somewhat of a gold rush, with players scrambling for land, but by the end, it will be a struggle. Uh, in this demonstration, as I have acquired the Venture Specialist, I can bid and most likely claim one additional region. The Engineer also gains a building license, allowing him to place a claim without having to roll the die. Without a license, one must roll, potentially not getting the zone you desire, and placement does matter. In the tank phase, players can purchase tanks, which adjust their price, and then deploy said tank in a zone that player controls. By default, tanks extract water, but you can modify them with converters, altering the output to ore, quartz, or energy. You can also build a supercharger on them as well, which doubles the output. These props redeem any criticism one may have about Planet Steam's production quality or how well the game implements its theme. Pieces fit perfectly together, making it immediately obvious what each tank extracts and how much. And would you believe we're not even halfway through the first turn of the game? Thankfully, each player gains a reference, even though they have mistakes. 
In fact, there are several. This leads to the extraction phase, which, where each player, once again in order, spends energy to extract from any of their tanks, placing resources acquired into their airships. Superchargers extract one more. Compar um, comparable adjacent tanks offer a synergy bonus, and a support airship controlled by one of the specialists can extract even more. This can allow a single tank, generally extracting one resource, to increase that to as much as four. And finally, we reach the buy-sell or market phase where players purchase or sell resources for a price indicated by those sliders, and as supply is modified, altering the price accordingly. As such, a player can manipulate the market in their favor while also crippling the efforts of, of, of another. The game notably lacks any form of trade, relying on the supply-demand market scales to determine value. The final maintenance phase reduces the price of ore energy to supply the market with tanks for the next phase. Players return their specialist cards, the turn marker advances, and the round restarts. As said before, money is everything. Greed is right. Yes, yes, we know that. The, the ga you gain money for acquired resources, licenses, land claims, and money in hand. He or she with the most money wins. Just like in life. Yes. Yes, that's true. Now, without controversy, it's safe to assume Planet Steam is a game intended for those interested in economics, specifically microeconomics. Intent does not equate enjoyment, however. My girlfriend, a bookkeeper, disliked Planet Steam, while myself, with a background in stats and economics, quite enjoyed it. It also helped that gain complete control over the quartz market in one game, and Nicole's energy business wasn't netting her any profit. And that's one obvious issue with the game. We ended ours one round early as the victor became clear. It's possible for a player in Planet Steam to run away with a tactic and lock out avenues of revenue for competitors. So, <laughs> obviously, I love this game. The supply and demand sliders, though simplistic regarding economic theory, are elegant when presented in this fashion. Although other games like Harbor also feature a slight variant on supply and demand, uh, this is a considerably more complicated variation of that. Admittedly, the theme initially appears pasted on, and the production quality rather simplistic. The board is not that much to speak of, with every shade of brown, whether it's beige, umber, taupe, mahogany, basically every color on a legs carousel. But then you pick up the box and wonder why it weighs over 10 pounds. That's because of the plastic tanks, and there are dozens of them. And they're solid plastic. These are hefty pieces. As is the Vesuvius-sized mound of cardboard money included as well. But these props all aid in the theme. The game would be considerably less enjoyable if the tanks were just merely cardboard tokens. Employing construction as a mechanic could not have been cheap. And even though numerous games employ it today, there were probably few back when this game came out in 2013. And certainly not in a game reserved for adults. I just don't see kids racing home to play a game about commerce. Well, other than that one. My intent with the videos I create is to comment on mechanics and where they could be improved or even homebrewed. But with this one, I found no real flaws other than the potential of experienced players overwhelming inexperienced ones. And I can only suggest incentives to beginners when surrounded by veterans to encourage friendly competition. Uh, it also would have been cool to offer... Um, character or faction cards to represent players instead of just colors, adding some additional personality to the game. I would have also liked to have seen more fluff to the setting to set it apart from generic steampunk setting number 476. I mean, you take the corporation cards from Terraforming Mars and you implement a similar system into this game, it adds so much more personality. Planet Steam is showing its age and its regularity at many game stores indicate relatively flat at sales. I only procured my copy via Boxing Day sale in Canada. That being said, I enjoyed it, despite a notably dense learning curve. This is Chris from Deus Ex Machina. Oh, and as addendum, Planet Steam offers few zipper bags in its box, with one notable exception, this monstrosity the game board slips into, marking the only time I've ever seen a game board inside a zipper bag. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.